phone, boom, 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 boom. Gonna shoot you right down. Right all for your feet. Take you home with me. Put you in my house. All right, what we've got here is a pneumatic cannon, uh, which is just really a fancy name for an air-powered spud gun. Uh, technically, though, this one's really got a barrel on it for tennis balls, so it's a tennis ball gun. Uh, the interesting thing about this one, the reason I'd bother you with it, is that we have a fairly nifty valve on this thing. Uh, it's called a barrel sealing piston valve. And I uh, just wanted to show you guys what I have learned in building my first one. All right, uh, got the uh, the valve itself removed from the uh, the barrel and the tank. Simplify things a little bit. And uh, first thing we do is we re we can remove the uh, the triggering mechanism, if you will, from the back of the main valve. It's really just as simple as turning it off because I've got screw mounts everywhere so that I can do maintenance on this thing. That's one of the key things and what makes them tough to build is you want to be able to maintenance them, work on them, change the piston out, fix an O-ring, etc. Now, like I say, this is just the filling station. This part here you hook a shop hose to. Open that, it fills it, close that. Come over here, click that, it triggers the water sprinkler valve which dumps all the air from behind the piston it's in here. Let's get a look at that thing. This cap was bolted on for a couple of reasons. One, I needed to reinforce it so that it wouldn't come flying out of here when the piston slams back. I also want to be able to make it removable so I can get inside. Getting this off of here is often my most fun part. Alright, after a considerable struggle managed to get this thing off. It's the first time I've removed it, so it was interesting and new. Um, what ended up working best was that I took a piece of one-inch pipe, placed it against the, uh, the, the washer on this end, tapped the other end with a hammer, and that forced the, uh, the bushing out of the back of this thing. But anyway, the way it works from a completely theoretical standpoint, is where we were going. Now, to that end, I'm going to give you a close-up here. In this end, I've got a piece of 2-inch pipe going into a 3-inch T. Okay, that's a 3-inch to 2-inch slip-to-slip uh, bushing. Now, the thing I had to do to this bushing was normally there's a little ridge in the back of the bushing that when you push the pipe in, that's where it stops. Well, you cut that little ridge out, and you can push the pipe all the way through. So I put this piece, which is just a, a, a two-inch slip to thread converter, so I can screw barrels on. I put that into a piece of one, a two-inch pipe here, slid that piece of two-inch pipe through this bushing. And when I got done, as you can see, if I can get the light right here, you ended up with a piece of two-inch pipe stopping about halfway through the T and it should be absolutely dead square and flat and, and if possible polished very highly with some steel wool so you get a nice smooth glassy surface. The reason you want to do that is because this piston is going to ride inside this part of the pipe. Go back and forth. Now in this case it's very very loose fit and I'll talk about that later. But that piston rides inside of there and when you put air in behind the piston, it forces that piston forward. I wish I had better light for this. But anyway, with that piston forward, it seals the barrel, or the uh, exhaust port. Well, now the air doesn't have anywhere to go except down this hole to the tank, where it gets held until you're ready to release the valve. Then, when you trigger that big water uh, sprinkler valve I showed later, all the air dumps out from behind the valve. Now, here's where you have to get a little math. When you've got, say, 100 pounds of pressure in here, just to make the math simple, this hole here is a two-inch hole, which means it has about three square inches of surface. So at 100 pounds per square inch, three square inches, that's about 300 pounds of pressure that are trying to push out of that hole on the piston. Now, when there's air on both sides of the piston here, there's no trouble. 
But when you dump all the air out from behind this piston, now you have no pressure behind it. And you have no pressure out here in this barrel. So you got a tug of war. Well, this is a three inch piston. The three inch hole has about seven square inches, which means it weighs about 700 pounds. 700 pounds versus 300 pounds. This side wins the tug of war. Boom, the piston slides back because there's more pressure pushing it this way than this way. So the idea is to get the air out from behind the piston as fast as you possibly can so that this piston opens as fast as it can so that the air in this tank can now go out the barrel. That's all it is, one moving part. Dirt simple. Let's look at the bushing first. This thing's got a lot of work on it. And uh, I'll make my first complaint about this design. And I have an alternate design I'll show you later, which I'll probably use next time. But I wanted to do one old school one. Yeah, I think you can see it there. That O-ring, if you look closely, you can see a couple gashes in it. If it'll focus. Basically, that comes from when you force it past these holes. What happens is the, uh, the O-ring pooches out a little bit, tries to get caught on the edges of those, and when you force it, fat, you know, force it past them, it bites them. Um, the way I found to fix that when taking them out or putting them in, you can actually put all these bolts in the holes so that they're just flush with the inside here so it makes it smoother. I've also gone to the trouble to polish the end of each bolt so that it's nice and smooth. So when I put this on, I actually put all 12 bolts in and uh, try to get that inside surface very smooth, lube this up with some uh, Vaseline's been working very well, and then tap it through there very carefully, tweak the bolts, and it's really a pain. It works, but it's really a pain. The other pain is, and you can already see, I have two O-ring grooves in here. I screwed the first one up. Getting an O-ring correct without having the right equipment is a giant pain. Now, all of this was done with, uh, let's see, I have a skill saw, a drill, electric drill, and a, uh, a belt sander. That's it. That and some hand tools. I don't have a good shop. So anybody should be able to pull this off if I could. But uh, by the second time I put an O-ring here and some more practices, I managed to get it pretty good fit. And it's got about a 99% seal. I think I can probably finish that up. There's a way to make these O-rings less deep so that they're pooch out a little bit more. All you got to do is take uh, some nail polish or some kind of nice paint that'll stick to, to plastic very well. And you take the O-ring out, put a couple coats of that under there, and it actually makes the O-ring a little bit bigger. Put the O-ring back on, it's tighter. So there's ways to, to play with the fit after you get it built. The holes um, were really pretty simple. Um, if you have a drill press, dirt simple. Um, you just take in every 30 degrees, in this case I wanted 12 bolts, every 30 degrees will give you 12 points. So you draw a little circle with the 30 degree things, you mark the marks, you go around here, you take your drill press and boom, boom, boom. I actually had to make a little uh, container to put this in and run the drill through that I'll show you later on on the construction part. So even if you don't have a drill press, you can sort of make a little, I think they call it a jig, to put the part in do a hole, turn it, do a hole, or turn it, do a hole, so it's sort of even and, and neat looking. Now, two other big modifications here. You can't see it because I've got this rubber bumper on here. This is a, uh, a half inch of neoprene sheet rubber that I've cut a donut out with a hole saw, two hole saws actually. But underneath this, what I've got is I've, I've filled it with epoxy. Now this is really two bushings. You'll see this later also. This is a, a three to two slip to slip with a two to one slip to thread. So it's got a threaded thing in here. That's, uh, that way I can attach and, and unattach the, uh, the triggering mechanism, whichever, whatever kind I want to use. Makes it uh, more modular, more useful.